someone who is real good at legacy, especially with Grixis Delver. We talked about Jim Davis and Saltai Delver being his wheelhouse. Um, for my money, which I don't have much of, uh, this is the best Grixis Delver player in the tournament. Sure. I don't even think it's close. Yeah, he really cut his teeth on this deck. Uh, we watched him win an open earlier this year with it. He's top eights basically every legacy classic that he plays with this deck. Doesn't win every single one of them because you're not going to win every tournament you play in. But he beat uh, Jerry Thompson in the finals of the first legacy open that we had this year in season one when we were in Philadelphia. And this is just, this is, as far as bread and butter goes, yep. this is it. So we're going to watch Noah Walker play his deck that he is most well known for in Grixis Delver against Ted Felicetti who is playing, it looks like, blue-red Delver here this weekend. Perhaps Ryan Overturf got yeah. to him a little bit. Maybe he's been reading some articles. Yes, the turf. And, and there's a big trade-off here when you move into a third color for your Delver decks. It gets a lot more powerful. You get a lot more options. But you're adding a third color. You're more vulnerable to, to cards like Wasteland and just having those clunky draws, which don't quite work out. Ted going to take a look at his opening hand. Noah will do the same. You see the numbers next to them. Noah Walker, number 22 on our SCG Tour Player of the Year leaderboard. Ted Felicetti, number 31. That's for the year, not the season. That is correct. Yep. Ted in the seasonal race, currently in second place. Really looking to qualify for the Players' Championship. Yeah, a strong weekend here will, will help put a little more distance between him and the players behind him. And he'll be in a good spot. For Noah, I think for this particular matchup, we draw a little bit more attention towards him because he is so, so good at playing this Grixis Delver deck. He's a young kid, a member of Team Card Hoarder, uh, but he is pretty gosh darn good as a 20-year-old from the Massachusetts area. He's got seven open top eights, a lot of them with Grixis Delver, two open wins. Uh, he loves himself some DDR. You a fan of those games? Can you dance? I am a dancing machine. Okay, you just lied, which I don't appreciate. I am... When I am fueled by the right beverages. <laughs> Water, soda, I totally understand. Yeah, just a little caffeine in my system, yeah, you know, get, get my energy level up. That's when the dancing gets going? I occasionally dance. Okay. The taxi and probe here from Noah Walker. He's going to fall down to 18, take a look at Ted's hand. He'll see a dismember, a red elemental blast, a brainstorm, a polluted delta, and a volcanic island. And Ted started things off as about the best he could in Island and Elver Secrets. Yeah, how do you feel about these, these cards? No white border lands here. I'm a big fan. Not even white border dual lands. This is a pretty deck. <laughs> you know, if Joe wasn't so good at playing miracles, he would be banned from the camera. Yeah. For not only what he has done with the white border lands, but what he has spread throughout the Magic yes. community. Oh no, he he deserves some sort of repercussion for yes. this. Yeah, you were saying Noah. He's he's almost a, a a veteran presence at a lot of the opens. Yeah, at age 20. But he's such a young guy, yeah. Flood of Strand here from Walker. He'll sacrifice that. What are we going to dial up here? And I was talking about having talent around you to work with. You know, when, when he teams up with, with Team Card Hoarder, that, that just it boosts his stock even higher. Yeah. He, he's young. He plays a ton of magic. He's clearly super sharp. And just all this potential. It's a Deathrite Shaman and a passing of the turn. Delver Secrets is going to transform into Insectile Aberration. Ponder is the reveal. Polluted Delta and now Dismember going to go directly after that Deathrite Shaman. I like it. Ted played a land beforehand to play around days. Here comes the Insectile Aberration. Felicetti is going to fall down to 16. Walker a little bit lower. Looks like he'll be at 14 when all is said and done. Here's a Lightning Bolt to go after the Delver. That is taken care of. And now we head back over to Felicetti, who's got a brainstorm. Yeah, and these matchups are fun because there's so much interaction like this. Play a little guy, get it killed. Play a little guy, have it countered. A lot of back and forth. Ooh. Press of progress. Well, yeah, that's a little dinger. I, I was looking. It looks like Ted has showed up with two of those in his main deck this weekend. Um, I was wondering if they would still be in, you know, post-sideboard in this matchup. It, it's doubtful that he gets Noah for more than, you know, maybe three lands. Anytime these decks end up with excess lands, they usually don't end up on the battlefield. They just get brainstormed to the top of the deck and then shuffled away with a fetch land. 
Brainstorm done resolving, two cards have been put back. Flooded Strand will be sacrificed to make it a beautiful Brainstorm. Gonna search my basic island, Wolf Felicetti. One of the things about Blue-Red Delver that you did mention as opposed to playing three colors, you make your deck a little bit better against Wasteland. You see him actively searching up basics. The follow-up now is another Delver of Secrets. Now we're gonna head back over to Noah Walker. He will draw. This is a Pyroblast. Delver down. Wasteland, Gurmag Angler. Days gonna take care of that. Walker has no way to fight back. Angler is taken care of. We head over to Ted. He will start with a Ponder. Ponder will resolve. Take a look at a couple cards. Chain Lightning and Delver Secrets among them. Yep, perfect, perfect. Can't be too unhappy. Huh? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Delver. Pass that turn back. Got Re the Delver and the, the card to flip it next turn. And he can even shovel away that chain lighting after he reveals it if he wants to. Yeah, if he, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see if he does want to keep that after the Delver reveal. It's Brainstorm here. That is going to resolve. So three cards coming here for Walker. A day is a young Pyromancer and an Underground Sea. The question is, does he have a fetch land or a way to shuffle? If not, he's probably in some trouble. Two cards back. Well, he does have Flooded Strand. Let's see where Noah wants to go next. Yeah, it's interesting. He has to decide how he wants to sequence this. Get the young Pyromancer on the board this turn. Um, you know, does he want to draw any of those cards that are on top of his library? There's young Pyromancer. Pass the turn back. One thing to be keenly aware of is Chain Lightning is the reveal. Yeah, and, and I think Ted is inclined to keep it now. Yep. His opponent's played a fourth non-basic land. Chain Lightning can get rid of the young Pyromancer, and then he's got the Price of Progress in his hand to really close out this game quick at some point. Does have to search up a Volcanic Island as opposed to a Mountain because it is a polluted Delta, which means the Price of Progress is going to hurt him a little bit. But he's in the driver's seat right now. Correct. Yeah. Walker is going to sacrifice the Flooded Strand. Of course, he's going to have to take the hit from the Delver. I believe he does not have an answer to that, but we will see. And for those of you who are not legacy aficionados, one thing that Walker can do to protect himself a little bit against Price of Progress is he can actually Wasteland himself. Yep. Um, and obviously, the Wasteland is tapped right now as he does untap and move to his draw step. But, but yeah, if he's seen that Price of Progress earlier in the game, or in, in a previous game, rather, we might see him start protecting himself by leaving that up. He'll wasteland that red source. Or protect himself that way. Yeah. Follow up. All right. All right. Pyroblast. Last card in hand for Noah is a daze, I believe. Ted draws passes. Death my Shaman's pretty good. Ted will draw. Jite. He'll play it. Will it resolve? Nope. I love Noah picking up the land there yeah. as opposed to hard casting the daze. It's actually better to have the card in your hand in case you draw a Brainstorm. Also, he just wants to have, I think, one less land on the battlefield. Yep. Because of Price of Progress. Now he's going to start activating Deathrite Shaman. And these are things for him that come natural because oh, he yeah. plays so much. And if you play a lot of Legacy, like, he didn't even think twice yep. about, like, maybe I should hardcast this. And then, you know, the the, the, the decision tree of if I hardcast this, maybe I'm playing my opponent's days. It was just a very simple pick it up, days that. Yep. You know, move right along. Here's Gataxian Probe, hardcast. The reveal of Price of Progress, Red Elemental Blast, and a Force of Will. A lot of players, I think, might pay the two life there. He'll pass. Day is the draw here for Ted. And these matchups are just so, so interesting to me. I mean, so much little back and forth. Uh, there's so many spells that get cast throughout the game. You, you see everything costs one. It, it, it's just really fun. You saw Walker take care of the Ponder to tie the game up at 10 to 10. Fella said he's going to be able to actually search for a basic mountain this go around because yep. it's Scalding Tarn. And now here's Price of Progress. Walker is going to take four. He'll fall down to six. 
Noah will draw. This It's a brainstorm. Three cards on the way for Felicetti because he did take the opportunity to cast the Price of Progress while Noah Walker Shields were down. That means he took off his ability to play the Red Elemental Blast in his hand. Yep. So now a brainstorm is a rocking and a rolling. Walker going to put two cards back here, one and two. Yeah, and at this point in the game, every decision is just so important. You see both of their life totals are getting lower and lower. Um, that brainstorm just probably, the, the decision tree just has to be out of control when, when, once you draw that card and it resolves. The card's too hard for me. Oh. Nah. But you, I mean, you're forced to play it. It's, it's well, the most. It's too good. It's the most powerful card in Legacy. Yeah. It's too good not to play. Yeah. Flooded Strand, after tapping mana play, Flooded Strand now we're going to play Cabal Therapy. He's got an idea of what Felicetti is working with, yep. obviously, from the probe earlier. Yep. The name is Red, Element Red Elemental Blast. That'll go to the graveyard. Force of Will and Days right now in Ted's hand. Noah is going to sacrifice the Flooded Strand. We'll see if, yeah, it's singleton green source so that he can start gaining life. And what I love about this, right away on the main phase. Yep. Well, he doesn't want to die to a, another price of progress. Yeah, something absurd that could happen. Yep. Yep. Brainstorm the draw. Here is the brainstorm. That'll resolve. And a one, a two, a three. None of those shuffle. Lightning Bolt, Force of Will, Grim Lava Mancer. They don't shuffle, but they're all good ones to have. The uh, question question Ted has is, is it so important to get this Deathrite Shaman off of the board that I have to Lightning Bolt it right now? Or just play Grim Lava Mancer. Or play Grim Lava Mancer and just give him an extra turn with it. Well, that question's been answered. He's decided, I'm going to Lightning Bolt this right now. Back to Noah Walker, we're going to go. He'll draw a card. Cabal Therapy. Name that tune. He names Days. Follow-up, Young Pyromancer. Pass a turn. Grim Lava Mancer onto the battlefield. Force of Will stuck in Ted's hand. Walker will draw. This is a ponder. Yeah, that's the best possible <laughs> when you have the young Pyromancer out there. Elemental tokens are starting to be generated. That was, I think, a real quick keep of that ponder. Yes, it was. Oh, Dark Blast. Huh? Well, this game's getting real tough. And now, Gitaxian Probe and Dredge. Maybe Dredge the Dark Blast. Yeah, yep. Yeah, he knows what's on top from the Ponder. Uh huh. So it looks like that the Dark Blast is just better than whatever he would have been drawing. Well, it was going to be a Delver and a Volcanic Island, and now the third card is a Daze. So, yeah. I think he'd rather have a Dark Blast. Now sacrifice Cabal Therapy. Keep the Elemental, obviously. There goes Force of Will. Now Ted's hand has been destroyed. Yeah, th this this was a huge turn for Noah. You just you see how grindy this matchup is, but the the black in his deck just gives him that extra element. You know, just that little bit of an advantage over Ted. Price of Progress has been found. Ooh, and Lightning Bolt. Bolt? So he's going to cast that, but that's going to be oh, one short. It's not yeah. going to be good enough yeah. to do it. No Walker going to win this match here over Ted Felicetti. Two games to one. Grixis Delver will take care of Blue Red Delver, and it's business as usual there for the player on the left. Makes it look easy when he's playing Grixis Delver. I, I,